Welcome back to my channel where I share information about life, wellness, and well-being. And today I'm going to talk to you about seven truths about self-care. Self-care isn't about disconnecting. This is the first truth. It's not about disconnecting, but what is it about then? It's not about disconnecting. It's about reconnecting. And sometimes, you know, we haven't even connected with ourself. So we may be starting from scratch and there's nothing to reconnect. It's just a genuine getting connected, learning how to connect with ourselves. So if you go out for a few drinks or you binge watch hours of TV, well, that's us disconnecting. But reconnecting is a more mindful way of being. And so we can reconnect and let ourselves let ourselves loose, you know, in a different way. Maybe we turn on some music. Maybe we move our body. Maybe we're around other people who are, you know, experiencing this reconnecting effort. Because remember, it's a mindful activity. So self-care isn't about clearing your mind and forgetting about so many things. I mean, that can happen, but it's more about being mindful. This is the second truth is that self-care is about being mindful. Okay? The first truth is that it's about reconnecting, not disconnecting. The second truth is that it's about being mindful. And it's not forgetting about all the bad things that happen to us or even obtaining a state of bliss because that's just temporary. It's more about the intention behind what we're doing for ourselves. You know, the moment that I notice I'm not being caring towards myself. Now I've entered into the practice of self-care. Okay. Keep that in mind. The moment that you notice that you're not being caring towards yourself is the moment that you are then practicing self-care. Because you, you're you're having that awareness. You're being mindful about, oh my gosh, I'm not being very caring towards myself right now. That even then when you have that awareness that you're not being, that you're not being caring for yourself, the key piece here is to not judge yourself for it. And instead, give yourself a pat on the back for noticing that you are doing that. Because the more and more you notice that you are not being caring towards yourself, the more awareness grows but this, the moment you put judgment onto it, now you're not caring for yourself again. <laughs> okay. So don't, and then don't judge your judging. Oh my gosh. Okay. Self-care is easy. It's, it's really easy to do <laughs> once you remove all the judgment behind it, which, which a lot of times is, is what holds people back from engaging in self-care because they judge themselves for being selfish. Yeah. The third truth about self-care is that it's not a performance. It's a practice. Same with life. Probably heard me say this in a previous video. Life isn't a performance. It's not like we get to a finish line and we're done. Well, maybe that's when you die. Okay. But until then, <laughs> until then, it's still very much a practice. And practice doesn't mean that it makes perfect. That is a horrible saying. Practice doesn't make perfect. It makes progress. Okay, so you're continuing to make progress. Self-care isn't something that, you know, you can show off in social media posts. No. Now it's lost its purpose. Okay, self-care is yours to discover. Self-care looks very different for you than it does for somebody else. If you're going, if you're basing your self-care on what you see on social media that other people are doing, and then that's what you think you have to do also, and, and you're trying to live up to the expectation of somebody else's standards of how they care for themselves, you're going to be disappointed. We're all operating on our own um, set of needs. No two people's set of needs are the same. So you have to see what works for you. And that takes practice. People might give you ideas of things that they've done and you try it out and you like it. And, and what used to work for you before, okay, this is a little bonus truth. 
what used to work for you before is not going to work for you all the time. Okay. What may have worked for you for years, one day doesn't do it anymore. We, we grow accustomed to, we, we might, um, grow intolerant of some of these self-care practices and some of us, um, part of self-care also may require newness. We might need a lot of opportunities for change and, and to discover new things that we like and that are out there to soothe us and to bring us calm and peace and joy as well, right? Self-care isn't just about how to relax, but it's also about how to bring yourself joy, okay? As I'm talking about these seven truths, uh, all these other truths are coming out. There's obviously way more than seven truths to self-care, right? I used to go to the gym a lot, and that was for my mental care, not necessarily for my physical state, but more for my mental state. But then going to the gym actually after a while was not good for my mental state. <laughs> I did not look forward to going there. And it was not self-care anymore. It was self-torture. I even switched gyms. And I thought that maybe maybe being in a different environment, in a different gym would make a difference, but it didn't. My body was not in need of that physical intensity anymore. It needed something a little bit more restorative to bring that mental um, well-being to me. Uh, what I ended up taking up was a practice of meditation, daily practice of meditation. And it is bringing me that, that mental wellness. So we have to be flexible. We have to be flexible and non-judgmental of ourself. How can meditation replace the gym? It's not about replacing it. No, it's about finding what works for you right now in this, in this time in your life. And this is going to change, right? Maybe, maybe I will be attracted to the gym again one day. The fourth truth about self-care is that self-care isn't about taking vacations. Although that's lovely. We love to take vacations. It's about choosing a vocation that you love. You see how I, I did a little play on words there? Yeah. Um, vacations are nice, but a vocation. What is a vocation? A vocation is a job that you love. A job, a career that you love. Because let's face it, unfortunately, we live in this society where we have to work. Um, and we need to take vacations from work, but the majority of the time we're not on vacation. We're in our vocation, having a, a career, a job profession that you love is self-care. It really is, you know, because relying on vacations as a self-care practice is only half of the effort. Okay. It's possible that you take your unhealthy habits on vacation with you. Okay. And you're complaining and it probably takes you like a whole week to, by the time the vacation is over, now you need a vacation from the vacation. I've always said that one. Um, so your, your vacation, it doesn't always meet your self-care needs at all. Like I've, I've heard about of moms who, uh, go and take a summer vacation with their family. It's a family vacation and they, they rent a beautiful house by the water. They're like, how's vacation? She's like, what do you mean? I'm just doing exactly what I do every day, but um, in a different house. And, you know, when you're not on vacation, you're working. So choosing a career that aligns with your needs is an act of self-care. And it's also one that's going to allow you to be sustainable over the years, right? On this earth's sustainability plan that we have for ourselves. <laughs> You know, I worked for 20 years um, in the criminal justice system, and I really loved that job. It was wonderful, but it was also very prone to burnout because you're constantly dealing with a vulnerable and hostile population. So after 20 years, that, that was good. 20 years. Um, now I'm still helping people, but people who are not so vulnerable or hostile. <laughs> so um I'm still in a vocation that I love while increasing my sustainability, my sustainability power in this career as, as an entrepreneur now, learning lots of new things. And sometimes that's a really key component for a lot of us in the work that we do is that it's stimulating 
that it challenges us, that it allows us for our own personal growth to expand. Cool. Let's go to number five. The fifth truth about self-care is that self-care is about taking care of your needs. Self-care is not skin care. Now, yes, I have a need maybe to put on some sunscreen to protect my skin from the sun, but it's much more than that. It's deeper, okay? It's Self-care is not what's on the surface. It's not about getting your hair done and your nails and doing your skincare routine every night. You know, the, these things, they're nice, they're lovely, but it's about your your deeper needs, okay? Taking care of your deeper needs, like time to yourself, time alone. Uh, showing yourself compassion and validating yourself. And the key to this one, self-care is about taking care of your needs without feeling guilty about it. Okay. This is where that whole self-care is, is not selfish. And people will ask me, well, what's the difference between being selfish and practicing self-care? And it really depends on what your definition is of those two words. Okay. So many people feel selfish when they take care of their own needs. And so overcoming the guilt is part of the conditioning that society has placed on us. And like I said, be aware of the shortcuts to self-care. Okay. Our mainstream society has been giving us these shortcuts in the form of beauty practices, like skincare, like I said, manicures, hairstyles, other mainstream self-care scams, if I can say, like spa days, weekend getaways, holistic retreats. These things are only scratching the surface. They're actually just band-aids rather than long-term solutions. Because as a society, we love quick fixes. (laughs) This is a society of quick fixes. These quick fix self-care outlets are not the solutions. Rather, you know, it's just a trick to make you think that you're tuning into your needs. But remember, it's it's not about taking a vacation from yourself. It's not about disconnecting. Um, it's not a performance. And it's about really tuning in to what you need as a human and making sure that, that you're honoring those needs without feeling guilty about it. But that's what society wants us to do, is feel guilty about taking care of ourselves because if we all started doing that too much, who would be out there working and getting stuff done? Yeah, It's not like it's, we'd actually be getting more stuff done. We'd actually be more productive as a society if we normalized taking care of our own needs. Yeah. So they, they try to fool us in that way as well. But we'd actually would be way more productive if we were given the, the space to tend to our own needs without guilt. Self-care is about how you show up for yourself without judgment. So this is kind of the same as self-care is taking care of your needs without the guilt. But then what goes hand in hand with guilt is judgment. Also shame can be in there too. Something's wrong with me because I want to take care of my needs or I am a bad person. I have done something wrong by taking care of my needs. No, that's just the result of judgment from other people. It's okay to put your own needs first. But many people that I speak to don't know how to identify what their needs are. And that's exactly uh, where the practice of self-care begins is when you start to ask yourself that question and you start to tune in. So you listen to yourself like you would a little child, how you give yourself what you need. Okay. Just how you give yourself what you need. And that is the ultimate form of self-care, giving yourself what you need, showing up for yourself. And you might be judging your needs. Okay, like you might think, oh, well, my need for alone time is a little excessive. Perhaps that's too much time. Maybe I don't need so much alone time. That seems like a lot. Um, Or you're spending a great deal of time in the outdoors and feeling the sun and feeling the air. And you're like, well, by being out here, I'm not being productive. I'm not getting anything done by, by being outside all day. Okay, but you're judging yourself because actually you are being productive because you're meeting a need that you have for fresh air and nature and sun and alone time. Okay, or or your need to surround yourself in a positive environment 
that's free from clutter or negativity, right? So don't judge these needs that you have. They're very valid. The need to be in the company of inspiring individuals. Hey, don't sell yourself short. Don't, don't settle for things that are not meeting your needs. And then you're just minimizing your need. Like, well, it's not that bad. Well, I guess I don't need it that much. But you do, okay? The second that you start to do that, now you're not practicing self-care. Now you're in the state of judgment. And this is a, a remember, all of this is a practice, okay? The practice of self-care is just that, is noticing when you're in a state of judgment. The last one here, number seven, really encompasses the whole global need for self-care because self-care is about raising your vibration. It's about raising you out of that judgment, out of that fear, out of that, you know, guilt and shame and into a state of contentment and joy and love. And when we're operating in that higher vibrational frequency, those higher emotional levels, then you're contributing to the overall well-being of the planet. You're contributing to the, the care of the planet. It's like self-care for you is self-care for planet Earth and all of its beings that live here with us. So true self-care is self-compassion. Self-compassion is self-love. And love vibrates at a very high level. It operates at 500 hertz, to be exact while shame and guilt operate at like 40 hertz. And then we've got pride in there that's just one above anger at 175. Um, a great author um, that I follow and that I've read a lot of books on uh, is Dr. David Hawkins. And he's got this book called The Map of Consciousness. And he says that for every one person operating at the vibration of, of love, which is 500, it has a positive impact on 750,000 people that are vibrating lower. And the earth is, of course, you know, the earth is part of an energy plane, right? Everything here is energy. So if we want to really contribute to the overall well being of, of earth, of human beings, then self care. Self-care is where it's at. So take care today to take care of yourself and to give yourself compassion and to remove judgment and just noticing and not judge your judging. This is all uh, a lot for some of us who have never done it before, who are still experiencing the guilt of these things. Um, but more and more, as you raise your self-compassion, you raise your vibration to love, no one's going to take that away from you. No one's going to take your practice and your need for self-care away from you because when you do that, it has a positive effect of other people in your life. And so that's what we want to do. We want to share the love, share our care, but first it has to come from within. Please share this video if you found it helpful. Follow me for upcoming videos on all things that have to do with life and well-being and wellness. And offer a comment as well. Love to hear from you. Thank you and see you next time.